welcome to Nehemiah's Wall, or at least part of it that has been identified. This one was a pleasant surprise. On our way to tour Hezekiah's tunnel, we got to stop and see more Bible history that we weren't expecting. Where are we in relation to the rest of the city? Here is the Temple Mount. This is the southern steps leading to the temple back in the first century, which I will be doing a review on soon. And here is the section of Nehemiah's wall. This portion of the wall is located today in the city of David, but was also part of the wall of the original location of Jerusalem. Here is another view. This is the approximate location of the city wall as of 5th century BC. This is where the temple would have been located, and here is where the visible section of Nehemiah's wall is today. Let's do a quick rundown on the events leading up to Nehemiah rebuilding the walls of the city. After ignoring warning after warning from God, the people of Judah were taken into exile by the Babylonians in 586 BC. The Babylonians not only destroyed the temple, but they destroyed the walls around Jerusalem. He set fire to the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every important building he burned down. The whole Babylonian army under the commander of the imperial guard broke down the walls around Jerusalem. Persia later conquers Babylon, and King Cyrus allows the Jews to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. The temple was rebuilt in 516 BC by Zerubbabel, 70 years after their captivity began, fulfilling the prophecy from Jeremiah. The land enjoyed its Sabbath rest all the time of its desolation it rested until the 70 years were completed in the fulfillment of the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. In 444 BC, Nehemiah is allowed to go to Jerusalem to oversee the rebuilding of the walls of the city. So the wall was completed on the 25th of Elul in 52 days. So how do we know this pile of rocks was from Nehemiah? No, Nehemiah didn't chisel his name on the wall. But archaeology does give us the answer. See, there were two towers along this portion of the wall, the northern tower, which is no longer here, and the southern tower. Archaeologists dismantled the northern tower due to it being unstable and likely to fall. At the bottom, they found two dogs buried together, which was a common practice during the Persian period. But underneath the dogs were a large amount of pottery fragments that dated to the times of the Persians. So the southern tower and the wall next to it would have been part of the repairs that Nehemiah had oversaw. Once again, the validity of the Bible is proven with physical evidence, and as more and more artifacts are uncovered, reconfirming the accuracy of the Bible, it will become harder and harder for unbelievers to claim there is no physical proof that the Bible is real. Now this concludes my very short review of Nehemiah's wall. I hope you enjoyed it. On my next review, I take you through one of the coolest parts of Bible history, Hezekiah's tunnel. But until then, thank you for watching, and as always, God bless.